All right. All right. All right. Brandon Aikens in the building. What's going on with you, my brother? Oh, not much, sir. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Um, why don't you uh, tell the people, you know, introduce yourself, tell the people who you are and, and, and you know, what you do and where you come from. All right, perfect. Yeah, I, uh, I currently own four different companies all involved in transportation. Mm -hmm. I started as a broker. Uh, I realized that is uh, very morally not what I want to do because as a broker, I was trained to lie to trucking companies and truckers uh, to make more money. So I left is, that behind and I... Is it, is, is it true, like, I think about a year, well, the year was the pandemic last year. I think a year before that, what was that, 2019, where the truckers went to uh, Washington, D.C. to complain about the brokers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was actually involved in that uh, where uh, OOIDA was trying to go to reverse some things because uh, I, believe, I forget what year it was. I want to say was it was it in the eighties? You might remember where basically the law was passed that gave brokers uh, permission to do just about anything, mm -hmm. and to really protect them now and put the carriers very vulnerable to, to everything. And the reason, an example of that is, you know, with like TPL, their their contract that you sign, uh, when you sign that, you're pretty much waiving all rights to everything. So I mean, if they decide that they want to deduct a thousand dollars off the load. You're gonna have a heck of a time trying to fight that. Well, you know, you you know they they you know some of the brokers uh, a, a year year and a year year uh, a year prior year to go said that you know they you know they they tell the truckers don't look in my pockets like don't 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 right. look at don't look at how much I'm making because you know I'm doing the footwork I'm doing. I'm doing the footwork. I'm 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 calling these places, making uh you know making loads for you and all like that. Getting I'm I'm getting you. Uh, I'm getting you the loads so you can keep moving. Don't look inside of my pocket or how much, you know, or how much I'm right. getting out of the deal. But I mean yeah. that's what some you know that's what some how some of the brokers feel. I mean, you, be, you, you yeah. know, you being a broker back in the day and, you know, like you said, when you started, you know, you you said that you was taught how to, you know, pretty much. Uh, what's that dude with Eddie, uh, Eddie Guerrero? You know what I'm saying? Lie, cheat and steal. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. I, I mean, well, and that's 100 percent the case. And, it, and it's silly that I heard that argument, but they said, don't look and don't look at because we got to go and do all the legwork. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. I had a time where I was a broker and I got a call for an oversized load. And since I was in management, I dealt with anything oversized or any of the issues. Right. And uh, so I, I took on this oversized load. They said, get us a quote. This is what the customer, the customer called me and said, give me a quote. I said, okay. I called one company. I said, hey, how much to move this load? They gave me their price. I right. called the customer back. I added $10,000 to the price because it was over the mineral so or their their price to move the load was like twenty three thousand. Okay. So I called back and said, "Hey, hey, customer, we can do this for you. It'll be thirty three thousand." They said, "Get it moved." They sent me the paperwork. I forwarded it to the trucking company. I was done in under an hour. Ten thousand. Mm. And they said, "Don't look in our pockets." That's why it should be federally regulated. That's why there should be some laws and limits to what a broker can do, because I made ten thousand dollars for my company in less than an hour. So, but is that is that ten thousand dollars all to you, and and or did you have to like, like ten thousand dollars that you had to you know again, give some of that to whoever you guys brokered the freight to? Nope, nope. The, the carrier needed twenty three thousand. I if I remember correctly, it was like twenty three and some change. Mm -hmm. So I said thirty three thousand and some change. I paid the carrier twenty three thousand. Our broker took in ten thousand straight profit. Well, it's 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 awesome for you to you know to be to be honest. No, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's awesome for you to be honest on that. But well, I mean, and I hate you, to be because I, it I, it makes me look so bad because that's what I used to do, and that but that that stuff like that is why I had to leave the broker world behind because that's not uncommon. 
Well, that's what uh, I'm saying. Why... You you left. I mean, you you left it behind, but you. I mean, theoretically, you left money on the table. Like, I mean, you was making money, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, I was. Oh, it was very very profitable. Yeah, but uh, on the flip side, you know, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. leaving that behind, I so when I left that behind. I decided that I was going to switch and basically become the broker's enemy and be a well-informed dispatcher. So then I knew what loads could pay and where they should pay from. I knew the rates for the entire country. I still to this day, you could say, hey, I drive this kind of transportation, whether it's hot shots, car haulers, uh, any kind of semi drive in, reefer, tanker, doesn't matter. You know, you could, you could ask me, hey, how much should a load from here to there pay? And I can tell you, you know, and, and that's because I've stayed on top of it. So uh, that's why I became a successful dispatching company. So where my, my dispatching company is now referred by some of the largest in the trucking industry. So if you were to call some big companies in trucking and say, hey, I'm looking for a dispatcher, who do you recommend? They're going to sell you my company. And that's because of the fact that I take care of my drivers. I never lie to anybody. And I've made it to where I have like a sales base. So even if I wanted to lie to you, I couldn't. And that's huge for drivers because they, they know they're not getting screwed over. And that's also huge on why some of these big companies out there will now refer you to me. Like, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if we can say this on the podcast, but there's a factory company. They're the largest in the country. And if you okay. call them up and say, hey, I need a dispatcher, they're going to tell you, hey, yep, we're in this. Go, go call them. This company is very successful, very honest. And then, but, but once that started taking off and doing well, I decided, hey, I need to own truck too. So I started a trucking company, bought semi trucks. And then a friend of mine reached out and says, hey, I want to start a trucking company, but I don't want to do it on my own. I'm nervous. He said, will you be a partner with me? I said, listen, I'll be a partner with you, but I got my hands full here. I said, I'll help make sure yours gets taken off, but I'm just want to kind of step back after you get some stuff. With it. I'll take my money still, but I'll hey. let you do everything. He said, that's fine. Hey. Brandon, are are you talking to me through yeah. uh, through a Bluetooth? No, uh. -uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it kind of sounded like you was going in and out or something like that. All right, that that's cool. Oh, sorry about that. Um, all right. So let's uh, you, you, you kind of went a little bit ahead, but uh, let's rewind it back. I I wanted you to give us uh, a a a day, uh, a day a day in the life of a broker. So, you know, starting with a potential phone call starting with a, a potential phone call from from a, a driver that's interested in booking the load with you from start to finish yeah. how, how did that how, how did that go yeah, so, so I would have a load posted on the load board and a driver would call me and say hey I see you got this load we'll just say something simple like uh Chicago to Detroit. Okay. And they'll say, hey, I see you get a load from Chicago to Detroit. Can you tell me about it? Now, I, the first thing I would do is I would, I would give you the details. And normally, depending on the day, I'm either going to be super short with you, mm -hmm. or if I don't have a lot going on, I'm going to talk a little bit longer. But I would say, hey, I've got a load of, you know, blank product, whatever it is. It picks up today at this time. It delivers tomorrow at this time. Uh, from there to there, it looks like from, from Chicago to Detroit, it looks like it's, you know, 400 miles. I'm paying $800. Okay. Now, I would come up with that number well ahead of time. I would have that in the notes. So anybody who picked up the phone to talk about that knew that we were going to offer out $800. Most likely, I have 1500 in it. Mm. And so then they would, then the guy would on the phone would either be, uninformed enough to not say a word and just take the load, which is a huge win for us as a broker. Any any time anybody listening, anybody who talks to a broker always asks for more money, never take what they first offer because we never would offer our max as a broker, ever. Okay. So it's like it, it's yeah. it's like it's like let's just let's just say eight hundred let's just say eight hundred will be will be the top end. And I and the actual low will actually be more, uh, say like, say like seven, like double that. So let's say sixteen hundred. So sixteen hundred yeah. will be will be the the ticket. Out of that sixteen hundred, you offer half of that, right? Yeah. So 
Yeah, so the, that's 1600 So the customer would reach out to me and say, hey, we got a load from Chicago to Detroit. We need to move. I would run the miles, depending on what kind of equipment they needed, if it's a hot shot or drive-in or a reef or whatever. Okay. And then I would tell them, okay, yeah, I'll move it, and then I'll give them a quote. So maybe I, I quote them back. They say, I can move that for 1600 They say, okay. So that means that I can send them proof that this load was done, and they will send me a check for 1600 That is going to happen. Okay. All I have to do is complete the load, and I'm getting sixteen hundred dollars. the The smallest amount I can pay you to run it means I get to keep more of it. So I've got to pay you whatever we agree on. So if you call in and say, "Hey, I'll do it for eight hundred," well, that means I'm going to pay you eight hundred, and I'm going to get sixteen back from the customer, so I make eight hundred myself. Okay, but you can, but, so but on a low end, on a low end, you could like actually put it out for like for like five hundred. Or, no, your top end will be eight hundred. You know, that's how they be like this barter. So you know, like how how the barters and the and the negotiator go. Like in in your mind, you'll be like, okay, eight hundred is where I want to I, I want to give it to you for. But we can negotiate if somebody comes in and say, uh, I could do it for five hundred. Or right. you yeah, could so put, or you could put five hundred on. You could put five hundred on the low board, but then somebody. Let me see if I'm saying this right. So you could put five hundred on the low board, but somebody could come in and negotiate up to the eight hundred that you're willing to let it go for. Am I right? Kind of. So, okay. so it just depends. Like, so what would happen is if I would, I would look at the lane and I would say most likely. Somebody's gonna want, you know, right around, like at say say Chicago to Detroit, 400 miles. Somebody's probably gonna want ideally, you know, a thousand dollars. Right. So I'm gonna tell everybody that I have in the broker in the brokerage with me. I'll say, hey, start out at 800 and see what they say. So my goal is somebody calls in who doesn't know a whole lot about what rates should be, mm. and I can make I can get them to take the load for 800. Now, most likely, what will happen is. is Either that or somebody's going to call in and they're going to have a little bit of knowledge about it. They'll say, hey, you know, I could probably do that for a thousand. And then they're going to come and, you know, the broker will come and say, hey, I got somebody that will take it for a thousand. Say, okay, we'll meet them in the middle at 900. Mm. And that's, that's almost always how it will happen when you talk to a broker. If you ask for more money, they're going to never give you probably what you, most likely they won't give you what you ask for. They're going to try and come in between that. Yeah, let's meet, so like let's meet somewhere back, in the middle. Yeah, so when I dispatch, if I see a broker's got a load from Chicago to Detroit and I call and they say they want 800 if I know that I want 1000 on it, I'm going to say, hey, actually, we're a little off. I need to be around 1200 on it. And then they're going to meet me at 1000 where I want it to be. So I'm playing their game on them right? instead of the reverse. Okay, okay, okay. So... Yeah. You, so what you so what you saying? Some of these not not all brokers is like that, but you saying majority of them, they 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 gunning for these new these new jets coming into owner operations, uh, coming into lease where they can where they can take advantage of them, right? I, I would venture to say, I, I would say majority actually, of uh, brokers have that same mentality, and it's because. You, you can start out a brokerage and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do things different. I'm going to be honest. But as soon as they start getting loads, if, if, if as a broker on that same way we were talking about, if you call me and say, hey, I'm interested in Chicago, Detroit, and I say, okay, man, well, I've got, I'm going to be honest with you. I've got $1,600 in it, but I want to make some. You're, kind of, you're probably going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll let you make some. I do it for 14 or 15. Well, there's only so long before that broker realizes, dang. If I didn't say that to him and I just told him I had a thousand in it, he'd probably take it for eight or nine hundred. Mm. Because they're gonna see the money they're losing out on by being honest and they're not gonna be honest anymore. So, and so that's why like for instance, you might call a broker and ask about a load and he'll say, Ooh, I, this is all I have in it. That's not true at all. I've never once when I was a broker, I never once ever told somebody how much I had in a load. Oh, I use that I use that line a lot, but I never actually told them the full amount. All right. So, so basically from what I'm hearing, you know, the veteran drivers, the, the, right. 
Oh, go ahead. What you about to say? Hello. Hold on, your phone cut out there for a oh, second. Okay. What you say? I, I was about to, I, I was about to say for like oh wait a minute yeah I I'm about to hold on right quick hold on give me a minute let me see if I can get another bar can you hear me oh yeah here yeah you give, give 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 me a minute let me let me see if I can get another bar because I'm riding through the okay. back I'm riding through the backwoods of I think this is Illinois I guess I don't know all right so. So basically, the the old schoolers, their their fight. If I'm if I'm hearing this right, the old schoolers shouldn't shouldn't be mad at the brokers. They should be mad at the inexperienced people that's coming into the game, right? Well, that that is true too. I'm, but I mean, you could rightfully be mad at the brokers too because they know what they're doing. And as soon as they hang up the phone with you and they've made a thousand dollars off of you, they're still celebrating. They don't feel bad about it at all. And that's, uh, but, you, but you are right. I mean, the, the reason you should be mad at the brokers is because of the rates that they're throwing out now. You know, if, if everybody in the trucking would work together, we could get, you know, we could get the per mile rates up. But whenever you get on the load board and you see a load coming out of Chicago going to California and, and it's paying a dollar fifty a mile, nobody can run that and profit. I don't care. You, you, you could try and argue all you want. I don't care what kind of equipment you have. I don't care how great your fuel mileage you claim to have is. You won't profit on a dollar fifty a mile from Chicago to LA with the fuel prices like they are right now. Nah. You'll have maybe a little bit of profit, but you're not going to profit like you should. Now, if everybody would say, hey, you know what? Screw you, broker. I'm not going to take that load for that cheap and force them to pay higher, then, then, it, then we'd all be a better. But that's exactly why right now, for instance, in Los Angeles, refrigerated freight coming out of Los Angeles, the, a few people are smart enough to turn that around on the brokers. The brokers are desperate to get their freight out, but there's mm -hmm. not enough trucks. So when I have a truck in Los Angeles, I post them up and I say, hey, don't call me and offer anything to me unless it's $4 a mile or more. And that pisses the brokers off, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. then, then they know if you want to move your freight, you're going to pay me that amount of money. And what the people don't understand is the brokers, if they don't have it, they'll move it for that. So, like, for instance, back to that little we were talking about, talking to Detroit. If I can't find a truck to do it for the rate I need and my customer starts getting on me, if I, I might pay a guy 2000 if all I have 1600 in it just so I can move the load and not get pissed off, pissing off the customer. Mm. And so that's, that's why the stuff in California, that's why... You know, my driver, my reefer trucks are not leaving California for less than ten thousand dollars, and it's because of what I'm doing. I, I send them over there. And I say, "Don't call me unless you're going to say, you know, I'll post up as don't. I need more than ten thousand, or I need four dollars a mile." Okay, that's what's up. So, and, is, and they're hurting so bad that they'll pay it. So, is it like like some situations? You know, because I, I work for. I, I've worked for a company that, that uses low board a lot. So is it is it true that if let's say company A calls you up, they book the load for X amount of dollars that you offering, you say okay, we're good with it, and then all of a sudden Let's just say y'all forgot to take the load down off the off the board, and yeah. so, and company B calls you up and say, "Hey, I, I see you got this load up here. I can do it for a hundred dollars less. Would you guys take? Would you guys then cancel the the load with company A and give it to company B because they they gave you a hundred dollars less? Yeah, either that or. If, if, if I have, if I post a load and I get a bunch of phone calls, I'll holler out and say, Hey, we're, we're now X amount less than that. You know? So like, for instance, like you said, if, if you call in and say, yeah, I'll do that. And the next guy calls in and says, Hey, I'm interested in this. I'm going to offer it to him for two or $300 less. Wow. And then if he takes it, then I call the other guy back and say, Hey, I'm sorry. I called the customer to schedule this. And they said it's already been canceled. It's already been moved. Oh. When you hear that, that's a lie. It's very, very, very rare for a customer 
to say, hey, I already moved it. Or as a broker, if, if they're bidding on it, then that, that could happen. They could be bidding on it and be outbidded by somebody. But that's not super common. And normally you hear that in what they say. So if you say, hey, what's the pickup time? Oh, I just need to call the customer and get them. That means they're most likely bidding on it because they don't have anything set in stone yet. Oh, wow. Yo. So whenever they say, hey, sorry, I called Content right here, y'all. <laughs> yeah, when they, when they say, hey, I need to, I need to, well, if they call you back after you book a load and say, hey, sorry, somebody else got it for cheaper or, hey, sorry, that load's not available anymore, that broker booked it with somebody else for cheaper is what happened. So the reason I know that is because my dispatching company is big enough now that I can call a broker and book a load, and then I can call back again and book it for cheaper. If they say that, then, I, then I'll take the load from that broker. I'll wait a little bit, and then I'll just cancel it on the broker so it screws them back in return. And then whenever they get pissed about it, I tell them what happened. I say, hey, you just canceled a carrier that did say to take it for a carrier that took it for cheaper. Don't do that shit. And then they get pissed, but I don't care, you know? All right, so check it out. Um, this guy is on Facebook, on on Instagram, uh, promoting his trucking business academy, and uh, yep. I, I I try to reach out to him, you know, to bring you know to bring him on, you know, so he can. You know, pretty much promoting, and I could get a little bit more, you know, so I could get a little bit more understanding on, you know, why should, why, why should some new jack give you four, five, six hundred dollars on information, uh, and and on information that you know that new jack could probably find for himself now see i i i tend to think of 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 people that's doing that i you know and don't get me wrong you know if you guys feel that i'm i'm wrong about this leave it in the comments below but i just feel that the people is lazy like yeah i want to go they i i well not late lazy should you know lazy is probably a strong of a word but they looking for instant gratification like Okay, I could get with this guy and he could show me how to run a trucking company without no trucks. And right. you know, they they want that instant I, I, gratification. That factory company. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even go the route. I wouldn't even think of it that route as in the people who pay for that are lazy and looking for the instant gratification as much as it is. There's people out there that just need help and don't know where to turn. And then you have somebody like that who's so, claiming to be able to help. But he's really just going to take the money from you and, and not do a whole lot. And, for instance, if, if anybody who's listening reaches out to me, I'll, I'll tell you how to start a successful trucking company today on the phone. And I don't want anything right, in return. Get... All I want you to do is get successful and pass it on to somebody else who's just trying to start. And that's the reason my reputation is as good as it is. That's why I have probably the most reputable dispatching company in the entire country. That's why I have successful trucking companies. I mean, that's why I'm building this reputation up for myself is because I'm not trying to, I don't look for any possible way to get money from somebody. Right. It, the way you, the way you're successful in trucking is by proving that you can be successful in trucking. I had to put in the work to get a dispatching company as high and as successful as it is. And the work to put a trucking company out on the road and get it successful. So I've done the work. Now I'm successful now. So I don't need people to call me and say, Hey, how much to learn how to be successful? I'll give it to you for free. So what do you? How, I mean, it's just helping somebody out, man. It's not. It doesn't take any. It takes what twenty minutes on the phone to help somebody out and change their life. I'm cool with that. So, Brandon, tell tell me, like, because it's it's more quote unquote gurus than him. That's 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 out here. That's using social media. Uh, that's using social media to say, hey, I can help you start your own trucking business. Yada yada yada. But these people. You know, how did they get how did they get the information that they got, you know, to quote unquote well, help you? Like, I mean, did you right. did did you pay for the information? I mean, I'm sure they're no, not I, gonna I put, I'm I'm sure they're not I gonna the say. Years. No, yeah, I, I put in the years of work. That's how I got my information. And then 
like these guys, you know, most of their stuff, they're probably getting it off of Google. You know, I mean, because really, if you think about it, a lot of what you can find can be found on Facebook and Google. A lot of the questions people have on how to start a trucking company. And so and it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right information either. Like, for instance, the guy we're talking about, I know somebody that took his dispatcher class. He has a class on how to be successful dispatcher. I thought, One thing he tells people to do is to find income. reloads that, their drivers, that meet their driver's operator, criteria. It might be truck, you know, $2 plus a mile or whatever truck. it means. But uh, they might find, that he says, find three loads and then call your driver and offer all three loads to him and tell them all about them, and then whichever one they pick, you call back and book it. Now, I don't I don't know how that sounds to you, mm-hmm. maybe hearing that, but me, that's the dumbest thing I've heard. Because the first thing that should come to everybody's mind that's listening is, man, the time that it's going to take to call on three loads and find the details of them out, then call your driver and explain those three loads to them, the chances of the load that you originally called on still being available by the time all that's done is so low that most likely you're going to be pissing off the driver. You're going to piss yourself off. You're not going to make any money. And that's why when I dispatch trucks, so I, don't, I don't do that. I say, hey, trust me. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to book you the best loads we can get. And when I book you a load, that's, you're just going to say, okay, and you're going to go do it. And it's because you trust me because I had experience. But he's out there telling people, yeah, go off for three loads to them. That's not going to work at all. What are you talking about? That's the dumbest thing I've heard. Wow. Again. But, and So he got his information maybe from Google or or a, a YouTube video. And people always say, hey, why don't you make a bigger presence on social media so people can learn from you and stuff. I don't have time. I'm running four successful trucking or transportation businesses. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to do a green screen and put out these little fancy ads Wearing, you know, wearing a, a, a suit, I don't, I don't got time for that. If, if you want to talk to me, call me. I'm always working. I'm always moving. I'm always helping people out. I'm always Shaking growing my bank. business. Yeah, I don't have time to get on and do a, a cute little YouTube video with fun little drawings. I don't have time for that. Well, you and know. I don't need to. I don't need to do stuff that to, to, to build my business. I build my business by people calling me up saying, "I need to. I need you to dispatch me, or I want to come drive for you." Or whatever it is. Or, hey, my, my semi-truck company is failing. Can you come help me out? Because i got a, I got a consulting firm as well. And so that, that's how I make my money. I don't have time for social media. Well, he, some people, in, 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 the case that, in the case of the guy that we're talking about, he says his master class is $169.99 right now. Uh, I, and I'm assuming that this is like all online, all through the, uh, you know, through maybe a Zoom, a Zoom class or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, I, I say last year between 2019, 2020, and up to now, you know. There has been an explosion of quote unquote trucking gurus out here. Hey, hit me up and I can I can, you know, I can get you in a position to be here and have six or seven trucks and get your own authority and all like that. But you mm-hmm. only but you only been in the game for like I don't know, for like two, three years yourself, you know? If if that man, if that that's the thing is now a, a good example of that is people are going to pay for like this guy's dispatching course, and they're getting on Indeed and Facebook now saying, "Hey, come let me dispatch you. I've got experience." They don't have any experience at all. And I just talked to a lady the other day who who went through a class, and she asked me for help because she felt like she didn't know what she was doing, but she's already she's got a company that's a dispatching company. She's got ads out for dispatch trucks. He says, hey, I'm having trouble when I actually get a truck that wants to dispatch to keep them because they say that I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I said, well, explain it to me. And and it's because she doesn't know what she's doing. I I, I told her, I said, if you see on if you're if you got a truck in Chicago, you see a load going from Chicago to Pittsburgh, and you see a load going from Chicago to Wyoming. Now the Wyoming pays two fifty a mile, the Pittsburgh only pays two dollars a mile, which one are you take it? 
And she says, oh, well, of course, Wyoming. I said, why? She says, more money per month. Do you know anything about Wyoming? She says, no. I said, well, do you know that Wyoming's a dead spot? I'm just going to out there. They're going to have to head all the way back over to Minneapolis to get a load. She's like, no, I didn't know that. There you go. That's why you shouldn't be a dispatcher. That's why you shouldn't just take a quick little course and then go call yourself a dispatcher. That's the same reason why this guy shouldn't go out and try to say that he has the future had to have a successful trucking company if he doesn't even own a successful trucking company. So what do you what, what do you say what, what what do you say when you got these guys coming back you know coming with the pushback saying okay well it's like it's it's like what my man Joker says if you're good at something never do it for free and let's just say they 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 got the information however they got it and they they feel that you know at one point or another. Yeah, I gave the information away, uh, and I, I just felt that some people wasn't serious about uh, about you know about the information that I gave them. So now, in order for in order for me to see if they're serious or not, they they're gonna have to pay me for it. What, what do you say when 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 they come at you with a pushback like that? Sure. So, so I, I understand, and and to some degree. So, for example, <coughs> if a guy calls me up and says, "Hey, I want you to be with me the whole way through the entire process of getting my authority and and everything," and on top of that, I want to make sure that when I'm ready to go, you have a spot for me with your dispatching company, and they want the whole thing, which the whole thing is going to take me multiple phone calls on a bunch of different occasions over the course of six weeks, you know, hours and hours on that, I'll let people pay me for it because it's going to take up that much of my time. But if you call me and say, Hey, here's some things I'm thinking about. What direction should I go? I'm not going to charge them. And it's because it's, it's just, it's just general information. It's just helping them out. You know what I'm saying? So here's, so I, I do agree that you should have to pay at some time for if somebody's really going out of their way to help you a bunch. But I think that, you know, for example, like this guy here, he, he doesn't have a successful trucking business explaining that he can help you get one. Mm-hmm. So on something like that, you know, that's what's frustrating is you wouldn't want to pay somebody like that. And and like I said, if, if you're just asking general information or wanting some guidance, people will give you that for free. You know, you could call me up and I'll give you that for free. If you want me to hold your hand through the whole process, then then I'm going to let you pay me because it's going to take me probably, what, six to ten hours on the phone with you plus six mm-hmm. weeks of being there whenever you need me mm-hmm. and then making sure that I have room for you to dispatch you whenever the time comes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, then, then I think that's fair to pay me. You know, but that's the tough part is, you know, if, if like, for instance, I don't have an ad out saying that I, I will do that for anybody. You know, the people who know I do that, are going to give you the referral and say, hey, listen, they'll help you out and walk you through the whole thing. That, that's different. You learn it as word of mouth. I'm not having to pay to get it out there. Does that make sense? Well, he says that uh, he says he could teach and mentor. He said he could teach you how to earn income. He says he says uh, earning about a, a 1K per week take home. After paying the driver, uh, that only requires about two to four hours of managerial, manage, manage, gero, man, management work, and right. uh, and two, he says that um, he can help you run an entire operation. Right. So. And so then, what how, I would ask how, him is how, how is he again? Again, you know. Where did he get his information from? Like, how, I mean, exactly. again, like I said before, did he pay for all of this good jewels right here? Is it, is it, is it, have, yeah. is it, is it fair to say that this like it's turned? Is it, is it fair to say that this like how I said in the beginning when we was talking about brokerage? Um, don't look in my pocket. Don't, don't look at where I got the information from. Just right. know that I got the information 
and I'm willing to give it to you at a fee. Well, like, here you go. Here's, here's a good analogy to think about. And, and, and it's because I've got kids that are involved in competitive sports. But so, so if, if, what if I had an ad saying, Hey, come, come, let me teach your kid how to hit a baseball. Mm-hmm. And, and you're, you're a parent with a kid and you're looking at doing that. And I say, I'm going to charge you now to teach the kid. Wouldn't you want some proof that I know what I'm talking about? Or what if I said, Hey, listen, I don't have experience. I've never hit a baseball. Mm. But I've watched some stuff and I've read stuff online. I've read some books. I can help you get hit a baseball. Mm-hmm. So are you going to pay a guy that's done the research online and, and read some books? Or are you going to maybe pay the guy that's a ex-professional baseball player to come teach you how to do, hit a baseball? God. That's the difference. That's the big difference. I'm going to teach you how to run a – I'll teach you how to run a trucking company. And, and we can chit-chat and I'll help you along the way. You can call me anytime you have a question. What's my background? What's my experience? I have a successful trucking company. That's mine. I didn't read books to learn how to do it. You know, I didn't. I didn't go to school. You, for you went through. The, you you went through the grind. You you went through the grind of trial yeah. and error, pretty much. Yeah. I, I, in the analogy, I'm the ex-professional baseball player. That's what I am. Mm-hmm. I'm not the. I'm not the guy who read a book and claims to know how to hit a baseball. So I'm. I'm the. I'm the. I'm the professional guy who owns successful trucking company. Not the guy who. You know, done some online courses and did some YouTube videos that claims to be able to, to help you get successful in trucking or dispatching and brokering. You know what I mean? And and that's why there's just certain things where I, I just tell you, I can't, I'm not expecting that. So if a guy calls me up and says, "Hey, I really want to have a, a successful Sprinter van company," I'm not your guy. I hate Sprinter vans. I don't think they're worth the money. Mm-hmm. I have no experience in that, so I'm not going to try and help you with that. Well, now you call me and say I want a successful semi truck. They're going to take yeah. their hey, three or two percent. So what can I do? Let me help you. Well, it's uh, this guy right here says that he has some successful success stories. What's happening? Um, he has some success stories. Um, one of which he says, if I can remember from what I read, he says uh, something about uh, a guy. Went through his class, got his fifth fifth truck. He enrolled in the trucking academy, and mm-hmm. uh, he was able to help him get a truck, uh, help him recruit, and uh, get some type of third party company. So, uh, would I? I don't, I don't know if you know maybe. Maybe he's doing something right, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I do think, but. I guess you just got to take it with a, gain of, a, a grain of salt, though, right? Yeah. My, my biggest issue is that he's having people pay him for information that, one, can be found online, most of it. And, two, people like me out there, well, you can just call us up and ask questions and we'll help you without charging you. You know, I mean, that's what's frustrating to me is is that he that it's doing that. And then on top of that, the other frustrating fact for me is that, I mean, I, I feel like that he, you know, him and others, I should say, are are really trying to go after people who don't have experience. Take and then advantage. when they're confronted by people, yeah, when they're confronted by people who have experience, they shut down and they won't say a word. Just like you saying, hey, you want to come on my show? Well, he's not going to come on your show because he's afraid that you're going to ask him questions and it's going to prove that he has a lack of knowledge in, in areas that are important to have knowledge in. Mm. You know what I mean? And so when people like you and I reach out and say, hey, let's talk, no, uh-uh, they won't talk. Yeah, because he haven't, he haven't, he haven't reached back out yet since I asked him. So, and, this, and me and you have been trying to link up for at least a couple of weeks, right? Well, exactly, yeah. And the reason we have a hard time doing that is because we're both busy exactly. being successful in trucking. That's why. Exactly. So on that time, you know, he's, he's part, you know, uh, that's about, yeah, but so. <laughs> well, we're not out there making a YouTube video, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Brandon, man, I, I, I want to thank you for uh, stopping by, you know, giving um you know, talk, uh, chatting it up with me right quick. Um, 
So now you 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 do have a successful trucking company with your other partner. Uh, y'all y'all yep. got y'all 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 got like what seventeen trucks between the both of y'all. Yeah, and then the, then the trucking company I own solely. We only have eight right now, um, and I'm just kind of taking that one slow, just because I, I've noticed as I add more trucks, it adds more on my plate, and I've got a lot going on, and I'm I'm kind of content where I'm at. So. How do you uh, how how do you find how since you're like an owner operator, I, I I dared I, I dare to say fleet owner now because you know between yeah, you I between, probably yeah yeah between you and your partner. I, I will say fleet owner now. How hard is it mm -hmm. to 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 get good drivers to drive your trucks, man? Not hard at all, man. Not hard at all, and I know that's contrary to what everybody hears, but yeah. it's not hard. And the reason it's not hard is because I I care about the driver. You know, if if you if you call me up and say, hey, actually, you know, you probably wouldn't even call me up. I'd probably find you out on the road or on Facebook or something. I say, hey, you know, I, I'm trying to look for a driver. What you know? What, what what do you need to to come you know drive for? Me? And the thing that people don't think about is when you ask a driver, hey, what what do you look for when you're driving for stuff? Like what's the thing that you wish you had, or you, you like a lot, stuff like that. And uh, you know, it's always a little thing. like I, I hear a lot of drivers, man, I just wish I had a nice mattress in the back. Well, the top of the line mattress for a semi truck is what eight hundred dollars. I'll make that off that driver in a single day. So if you want some nice eight hundred dollars mattress because that'll keep him happy and and everything, I'm gonna buy it. Or if he says, "Hey, you know, I, I like you know, I've never had a nice refrigerator, four hundred dollar refrigerator, just to keep him happy, that's that's easy." That you know, you know or, I, or I was just like about I, I was just about to ask you that because a lot of you know a lot of a lot of people say they care about the driver, but. They 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 tend to put them in in crappy equipment. So oh yeah, exactly. do you do you think yeah. do you do you think uh, caring about the driver is making sure that he's he's all right in the equipment or all right no. financially? Not the equipment has nothing to do with with, with it in my opinion. Now mm -hmm. people might disagree, but. You know, as as a guy started, you know, when I started out, I didn't have the money to buy a brand new ten word. Right. You know, right. I, you I, you only had enough to get just can. to get something to get you to get you started. Right. Yeah. My my first truck I bought was a 2011 Volvo. Mm -hmm. It wasn't pretty. You know, but when that driver said, "Man, I just wish I had a nice mattress," he got a he got a brand new eight hundred dollar mattress. He says, "Man, I I wish I had a nice refrigerator, brand new refrigerator." I bought I bought Wi Fi for the truck. And the and truck and the truck in is twenty eleven. <laughs> twenty eleven. Yeah, and I put Wi Fi in it. I put a nice a brand new T V in it, a fire stick in it. So that guy has something to do when he's off. And and the whole reason is because I'm trying to make him comfortable being where he's at so that way, you know, just making sure that showing that I care that that he's a human. You know what I mean? And and that's and that's what and that's this because I'm competing with companies that can buy him a 2020 Kenworth. Mm -hmm. I, I can't buy that right now, you, you know. But there's companies that can. You know, so, I so those. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just gonna say that. No, you good. That's 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 why I'm being smaller. I'm able to compete with the big companies because. And then another example is, you know, if 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 my drivers do really well mm -hmm. for me. I'm going to take care of him. So, like, I got a driver. I pay him $1,200 a week to drive, and that's a flat rate. He's only got two years of experience driving for my truck, so it's not like he's been around and, you know, not paying him enough. And, and this is a guy who lives in the Midwest, so keep that in mind. I know East Coast and West Coast drivers get paid more because the cost of living higher. But anyway, I, I pay him $1,200 a week. He ran a load for me last week. And, and after, it, it was from Los Angeles to Maine. It was $11,800 load. After expenses, including his pay, I profited about sixty five hundred dollars off that run for that week. Now he I, ran his ass off for six mm -hmm. days straight to make it, right? Mm -hmm. So I I gave him an extra thousand dollars last week. Okay, that's what's up. I you and, know and he freaked out on me, man. I, you know, he's all excited. I, I drove for you know, I, I drove for a local company out of Ohio and uh -huh. I, I to be honest with you, I, I really truly enjoy driving for that company you know unfortunately covid hit so but 
the only issue that I had with them was that the equipment was it wasn't it it wasn't crap. It was just it was just uh I'll put it like this. It wasn't crap, but it was like uh but the company itself took care of their drivers. You know what I'm saying? Made sure that their drivers was comfortable. Like I was stuck in yeah. Houston. I was stuck in Houston for for about a week, a week and a couple of days. And they made sure that I was all right by putting me in a five star hotel. And then exactly. and then after that, after I got the after I got the truck back, got the truck fixed, they 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 took care of me on the back end by my check. Because I was surprised at how much I got when I was stuck out in Houston. So yeah. I I was like, you know, I was like, well, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm good with that. You can give me a a a subpar equipment, but I know that you're taking I, I know that you're taking good care of me because you care about the drivers because you want to make sure that the drivers is getting paid well and getting you know getting paid well and making sure they all right. But it's just that yeah. the equipment, though, and I, and I, I, and if I was still with them, I, I probably could tell them to say, "Hey, I want a refrigerator. Hey, uh, yeah. I, I want a better APU or not an APU, uh, a better, uh, a bet, whatever, whatever." They yeah. didn't, they didn't have no APU, so I, you know, the island was it wasn't no problem. But um, right, but yeah, man. I mean, even the even the company I'm with now, you know, uh, the owner is. I, I got to give it to him. He's one hell of a guy. I, I got to give it to him. He he honestly cares not only about his equipment, but he 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 truly cares about about the drivers. And right, but what he wants in return. He don't want no bullshit. He he's a straightforward type of guy. He he don't want no bullshit, you know. And it's just something that it's just something that, you know, drivers that's coming in or, you know, that's thinking about coming over here, they they're going to have to get used to it because if you if you coming over here from like a major carrier and all like that, bro, throw all that shit that you did at the major carrier out the window because Right. You 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 won't be able to you won't be able to fit in over here. I I right. you know, you won't be able to fit in over here. He he uh he he wants he wants you to run. He wants you to run, but at the same time, he'll take care of you. He'll make sure that you're all right. You know, it's just right. you know, this company is that you just have to, you know, you you have to just get used to their way of trucking you know what i'm saying now if you can't get it, it you know like like he told me if you can't get used to it then this ain't the company for you so right right the, are are you the same are you the same way yeah yeah man uh, like i said i just I, I i i think of every driver as 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 you know a uh, human and and so i want to i want to know what they're thinking how they're feeling about things and then, like you said, if, if because I can't buy brand new trucks, if my truck breaks down, I'm not going to make you suffer, you know, because of because of something that is definitely not your fault. You know what I mean? So, uh, and it's just simple things like that. And honestly, I just wish everybody would do that anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I wish all companies would do that. So it wasn't it wasn't so you know because there's there's so many people out there that either you know, start truck driving and they get on with a company that doesn't care about them and then they hate it and then they never, they leave the industry completely. And if they would have just signed on with a carrier that cared about them and, and made them feel welcome and took care of them, they might be long-term really good drivers. You know? And that's, that's I think that's what's happening. There's that's that's, two, there's that's, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for, you're looking for retention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, and, and and every one of my drivers knows that I hope that one day they can start their own authority and get their own truck going too. All and right. I and I will never and I help him. You know, if he says, "Hey, you know, I'm about to the point where I got enough money saved up, I'm going to help him." 
it doesn't bother me that he's going to leave me as a driver because I know he's going out there to better himself. And I'm just glad that I was able to give him a job that provided well enough for him to make the money to go and do that. Well, that's what's up. Brandon, man, thank you for coming on, man, and uh, and chopping it up with me today. I really do appreciate it. Are, are, are you still looking for drivers, or are you you pretty much good where you at? Right now, man, I'm good on drivers. Right now, what I like to find more of is uh, is I would like to find more semi-truck companies or driver owner-operators uh, from my dispatching side of things. Cause I'm, that's, that's always growing. And uh, I always have room for that. And the, and the reason why I'm adamant about that is just because I've been reading a lot of articles, man. And there's a lot of guys who go and get their own authority in their own trucks and trailers and semi trucks, and they're failing. And the reason, and, and like my my uh, uh, consulting firm that I started for trucking, you know, I get a lot of calls from guys that are failing right now. And the reason they're failing is because they're not making enough money on their loads. And the reason they're not making enough money on their loads is because they don't have dispatchers that know what they're doing. And and I do. My company does know what we're doing dispatching. And uh, I just want to help make people money, man. And uh, so, yeah, anybody that listens or anybody you know that's got their own authority or, you know, own trucking company, whatever, send them my way. And, well, go ahead and, uh, go, go ahead and uh, shout it out, man. Go ahead and uh, give out the information if you want. Yeah, man. Only, you, only thing, only th- hey, hey, Brandon. Only thing I want is a yeah, cup of yeah. coffee. So my cash app is dollar sign lockout man. Uh, uh, dollar sign lockout man. All right, there you go. Easy enough. Yeah, man. Uh, anybody listening or anybody that knows anybody, if you're looking for questions to get your own authority, like we were talking about earlier, you can call me. Or if uh, if you're looking for uh, somebody to dispatch you, you can give me a call. And the number is just eight one six. Four nine two nine zero one five. All right, definitely test, definitely test that over to me, man, so I can uh, so I can put it in a uh, in the description as well. Okay. And uh, you awesome, know, hopefully, hopefully you get some, uh, hopefully you get some feedback out of it, man. And don't don't forget to give me some Absolutely. coffee, bro. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right, man. Hey, you you are a citizen now, man. If you uh. If you're interested in coming on uh, again, you know, for for anything, definitely reach out to me, man, and uh, we'll get out. Yeah, uh, we'll you, we'll definitely get it on. Uh, how was your fourth, yeah. man? How, how was your holiday? Oh, it was good. It was good. It was fun. Uh, it's always exciting, you know. And it's uh, I think I think it's silly that everybody's closed today. You know, I think everybody should be running today. But that's yeah, the every, today yeah, everybody's today. taking uh, taking it off today. All right, B man. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, big yeah, guy. Man, we'll talk again, and, and next time we can do something more specific. You know, a specific topic that maybe somebody's interested no, to know more about. No doubt, know? no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Any any time you ready, man. Just uh, just hit me up, and uh, and uh, I'll get it. Uh, I, we'll we'll get it together. I appreciate it. Searching, 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 I'm searching, searching.